The Florida Thoroughbred Breeders and Owners Association and the Florida Department of Agriculture present Thoroughbred Week with John Henderson. Also presented by Adina Springs South, Double Diamond Farm, Gulfstream Park, Jerry Parks Insurance Group, Ocala Breeders Sales Company, and Tampa Bay Downs. Hello everyone, Jesse Ullery filling in for John Henderson on this edition of Thoroughbred Week. Featuring a 1-2 finish by stable mates in the Grade 1 Hollywood Derby and the latest victory by a talented distaff turf miler in the Grade 1 Matriarch Stakes. We begin with sprinting fillies and mares at Turfway Park in the holiday inaugural stakes. Deer Elaine, the 2-1 favorite, Jimmy McNerney has the call. The first quarter mile was a torrid 21 and 3 and it's touch of bling shows them up top. Melaleuca right to the outside, looping up three wide. Here comes Marquis Cowgal, even further out. Marquis Miss and waiting on a seam. Mama Maria has a half mile 44 and one. And they come to the top of the lane. Touch of Blaine cuts the corner. Marquis Cowgal bears down to the outside. Down the center comes Marquis Miss, absolutely wide open with an eighth of a mile to go. It's Marquis Cowgal's found the front, but Marquis Miss is the danger to the outside. These two down to the wire. Marquis Cowgal, Marquis Miss. These two to the wire and. Mar Marquis Miss wins it. The full sisters battle it out as three-year-old Marquis Miss defeating five-year-old Marquis Calgal by a neck. Didi Elisorio aboard the OBS sales graduate in 109 flat. A two-time stakes winner at Oaklawn Park to open the season. Marquis Miss snaps an eight-race losing streak. The Philly by Cowboy Cow was bred in Kentucky by David Jacobs and was a $20,000 OBS June two-year-old. Trained by Ingrid Mason, Marquis Miss has earned $225,000 for Joe Ragsdale. To Aqueduct for fillies and mares in the Grade 3 Gopher Wand Handicap, Bar of Gold, an 18-length winner in the Empire Distaff, the 3-5 favorite, Travis Stone picks up the call. Moving up the backstretch, Burn Control and Wonder Gal. Through an opening quarter in 24 and 1 fifth seconds, they share the lead heading past the half mile pole. On the far outside, Highway Star advances up to be third. Bar of Gold and High Ridge Road are right there, fourth and fifth. And down inside, Camille Caudel finds a seam and tries to come up on through. Cayman Croc still trails as they round the far turn. The half was 47 and 3, and now Wonder Gal comes away with the lead. It's Wonder Gal in front heading for the quarter pole. Burn control right there. Highway stars poised on the outside and bar of gold swings wide for the stretch drive. High Ridge Road tries to keep her pinned down and in behind horses as they head for the final furlong. Wonder Gals in front and front by one. Bar of gold with some sailing now. Highway star is there and High Ridge Road is kicking in too. And farther out it's Cayman Croc down to the final 16th. Highway star grabs the lead. High Ridge Road in the outside finishing fast. Highway star and High Ridge Road. Highway star won it. A New York bred owned by Chester and Mary Broman takes the go for wand, but it's not odds on favorite bar of gold. Instead, it's Highway Star, the winner by a nose over High Ridge Road, Angel Arroyo aboard in 138 flat. The third consecutive victory for Highway Star, who is coming off a three and a quarter length decision in the New York Stallion Stakes over the track. The three year old filly by Girolamo was bred in New York by Chester and Mary Broman. Highway Star has won five of seven starts for a bankroll of $369,000. Rodrigo Ubio trains the winner. For all your insurance needs, a specialist at Jerry Parks Insurance Group is there to assist you with 40 years of exceptional coverage. Look for Jerry Parks, John Cassie, or Kelly Weeks at the 2017 sales. To Del Mar for the Grade 2 Bayacoa Handicap, Argentine import Val Dore, the 1-2 favorite, Trevor Denman has the call. No change in the order. They have a half mile left to go, and Glory Zapper is still the leader. Vale Dory just biding her time in second. Two lengths back to Desert Madam in third, and then comes Wild at heart. Moyo Honey is still six off the leaders, then three back to Show Stealer, Autumn Flower, and Barbara Beatrice. They are coming to the quarter pole, and Vale Dory now makes her move. And Vale Dory strikes the front with a quarter of a mile to go. Moyo Honey is moving in dangerously down at the rail if she can find room. Homeward bound, and Vale Dory. Moyo Honey has room at the rail. Down the center, Wild at Heart is coming home gamely. Vale Dory, though, still has a commanding lead, digs deep and finds more. And Vale Dory in another classy performance this afternoon. Vale Dory and Mike Smith, far too good in the Bayacoa. They win it easy. 
Finishing like the race's namesake, another Argentine bred sensation, Val Dory, scores by three lengths over Wild at Heart. Mike Smith aboard in 144 and 3. A Group 1 stakes winner in her homeland at 3, Val Dory has won three of five starts in Southern California for trainer Bob Baffert. Third behind Stellar Wind and Beholder in the Grade 1 Zenyatta Stakes, the four-year-old filly by Asiatic Boy was coming off a 10 and a quarter length allowance victory at Santa Anita. Val Dory has earned nearly $455,000. Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Maktoum purchased the winner privately prior to the Dubai Racing Carnival. Val Dory paid $3 to win and is the Malone's favorite of the week, presented by Malone's, Lexington's favorite steakhouse. Watch Thoroughbred Week replays online at tbreadweek.com. Multiple grade one winner first Samurai by Giants Causeway got off to a quick start at stud, siring grade one winners in each of his first three crops. His talented son Lee captured the grade one Don handicap in record time and retired to stud with over $2.3 million in earnings. Sovereign Award winner Stacked Deck captured the Grade 3 Bold Venture Stakes and Grade 2 Kennedy Road Stakes, both just a tick off track record times. First Samurai at Claiborne Farm. Castleton Farm has a long and distinguished history as one of America's great horse farms, having reared multiple champions over the years. Situated on 1,100 acres, some of the finest bluegrass Kentucky has to offer, with 15 barns, including an isolation farm, providing full-service boarding. Castleton has a depth of professional experience coupled with passion for the thoroughbred horse and is dedicated to providing the most professional boarding experience possible in the thoroughbred industry. Kentucky's premier thoroughbred boarding, Castleton. And now, a Florida thoroughbred history moment. In 1956, a small, feisty horse from Florida named Needles and his owners Jack Dudley and Bonnie Heath shocked the racing world, winning the Kentucky Derby. Needles proved that champions with modest pedigrees could be grown in the Sunshine State, thanks to the limestone-rich soil and spring water. His wild acclaim created the horse capital of the world that we know today. This has been a Florida thoroughbred history moment. New to cool more America for 2017, Air Force Blue. A force to be reckoned with. A champion two-year-old by Warfront. And Air Force Blue now comes bounding through. Two, three legs clear. A really good horse. A three-time Group 1 winner. Armed with a devastating turn of foot. He's ready to take flight as a sire. It's time to get on board. Cool more America. Home of champions. Welcome back to Thoroughbred Week with four races for two-year-olds in this segment. Two-year-old stakes action is presented by BC2A Paste. Reduce the likelihood of tying up with BC2A Paste. First stop is Tampa Bay Downs for the inaugural stakes. Undefeated Obvious won the 3-5 to five favorite. Richard Grunder has the call. There's the great cold on the outside. Chance of luck. And he's going to the lead toward the rail. Stapleton under an all-out ride now to be second. That's Don't Come Knockin', racing along third, and Obvious One has been defeated as they turn for home. It's Chance of Luck now, he's in front and going away. Stapleton is there toward the rail. Up on the outside, here comes Don't Come Knockin', charging late in deep stretch, Chance of Luck. Don't Come Knockin', is surging late, the only one with a chance. Chance of Luck will hold him off by a diminishing head. Chance of Luck holds off Don't Come Knockin' officially by a neck. Eric Rodriguez aboard the OBS sales graduate in 110 and 4. The Gerald Bennett trainee is 2 for 2 after breaking his maiden for a 40,000 tag at Laurel Park. The first stakes winner for his sire skip shot. The colt was bred in Kentucky by Mikhail Yanikov. A $6,500 OBS two-year-old, Chance of Luck has earned nearly $49,000 for J.J. Brevin Stable. To Golden Gate Fields for the Gold Rush Stakes, Colonel Sampson, the 9-5 to five favorite, Michael Rona has the call. Around the far turn in the Gold Rush, 
Nothing separating Tipo Duro and more power to him. Chased by Aqua Frio, Colonel Sampson the fence. Riser still a bit wide from Manila Mischief who's yet to see daylight and Vibe on the inside with six lengths to pick up. On the swing for home, Tipo Duro and more power to him. A length and a half Aqua Frio, Colonel Sampson. Vibe has room at the fence. Manila Mischief getting to the extreme outside. About three lengths out of it as Aqua Frio joins more power to him with a 16th to go than Colonel Sampson. Manila Mischief, Aqua Frio in front. Colonel Sampson driving at him on the inside. Colonel Sampson got up to win from Aqua Frio. Race favorite Colonel Sampson holds off Aqua Frio by a half a length. Juan Hernandez aboard the Keeneland Sales graduate in 138 and 2. Winless in his first four starts, the Owen Hardy trainee advancing to Stakes Company after breaking his maiden in his fifth attempt at Del Mar. The gelding by Colonel John was bred in Kentucky by his owners Kasner Racing and Corey Johnson's CJ Thoroughbreds. Colonel Sampson has earned $108,000. To Woodbine for the display stakes, trainer Mark Cassie sent out three of the ten starters, including eight to five favorite King and his court. Robert Geller has the call. It's Flow Motion still in front of Patchy Cruz, splitting them now, Guy Caballero. On the outside, Vanish just a couple off, and Heman and Har on the rail. A length away, My Way Tapper, three wide recoil, the inside stop, who's that? King and his court behind, and is starting to wriggle up now. Last of all is Juro Jin. They went a half 49 and 3, and the leader flow motion by a length, Guy Caballero, Patchy Cruz, Vanish about to join them on the outside, then Heman and Haran. And off the track, recoil the centre, My Way Tapper. King and his quarters worked home. Next to last stop, who's that? And last, Juro Jin. They go to the quarter. Flow motion, Guy Caballero joined by Vanish. Then Patchy Cruz off the track, recoil. Up the inside, Heman and Haran and My Way Tapper. Juro Jin around King and his court. And last stop, who's that? Guy Caballero and flow motion tackled by Vanish. Vanish trying to level now. Down in the centre, My Way Tapper. Narrowly on the inside, flow motion. Vanish, Guy Caballero and King and his court flying at the trio got them all as if he just began the race king and his court rules again runners trained by mark cassie finish one two with race favorite king and his court defeating 11 to 1 flow motion by a length and three quarters gary boulanger the winning rider in 145 flat king and his court is two for two for cassie after being purchased privately by Wachtel stable and gary barber in his first start for his current connections, he defeated Canadian breads in the Coronation Futurity. The gelding by Court Vision originally sold for $3,000 at the Canadian Yearling Sale. King and his court has earned nearly $243,000. Darby Dan Farm Stallion dialed in, the number one first crop sire with progeny earnings over $1.4 million. Dialed in is represented by an impressive 18 two-year-old winners in 2016. Contact Ryan Norton at Darby Dan to book your mare for 2017. To Tampa Bay Downs for two-year-old fillies in the Sandpiper Stakes, our Angel Caitlin, the 8-5 to five favorite. Once again, here's Richard Grunder. They approach the quarter mile pole. Our Angel Caitlin trying to take him start to finish. Wild Cheers is toward the rail. Jumbie Bay is set down for the drive on the outside second and Lulu Laura swings to the center of the racetrack. Third is they're into the stretch. Our Angel Caitlin has the race to win or lose. Here's Jumbie Bay ducking to the inside and appears to be the only one with a chance from far back. Star Gator now coming on, but down to the wire. It's our Angel Caitlin. She'll make every pole a winning one and Gerald Bennett sweeps the stakes. Reporting home four lengths to the good. Race favorite R. Angel Caitlin, the front running winner officially by three and a half lengths over two to one second choice, Jumbie Bay. Edwin Gonzalez aboard the Florida Bread in 110 and 3. A sweep of the two year old stakes last Saturday at Tampa Bay Downs for trainer Gerald Bennett. A five length maiden winner on debut at Delaware Park, R. Angel Caitlin was coming off a victory in the juvenile Philly sprint at Gulfstream Park West. A $50,000 OBS June two year old. Our Angel Caitlin has earned $147,000 for Avril Racing and CCR Racing Stable. The filly by High Cotton was bred in Florida by Craig Lawrence Wheeler. Florida breads, race them or chase them. Spendthrift Farm Stallion Temple City, Dynaformer's best son at stud. Temple City is the sire of four graded stakes winners in 2016, including Grade 1 Hollywood Derby winner Annals of Time and three-time Grade 1 winner Miss Temple City. And Startup Nation is a very promising cult.
Bolo absolutely annihilated them. Miss Temple City sharp in the hilltop. Papa Cool, Papa Cool, exploding through under a hand ride here. Very impressive. Point of entry would not be denied. And they're into the stretch. Point of entry's taking the lead. Point of entry, a two-length lead. It's point of entry taking the lead. Point of entry will go to the Breeders' On Cup. On a five-race winning streak. Five-time grade one winner from a deep Phipps family. With a pedigree and physical to become the heir of Dinah Former. Point of entry. Standing at Adina Springs. Now a Florida thoroughbred history moment. Founded in 1956, Ocala Stud is the oldest active thoroughbred farm in Florida and a pioneer in the thoroughbred industry. The landmark Ocala Stud's message is simply put, if you want a runner, look to Ocala Stud. Ocala Stud revolutionized the worldwide industry, creating two-year-old in training sales. Now represented by the third generation of the O'Farrell family, the farm's reputation as a top producer of thoroughbreds makes them a symbol of excellence. This has been a Florida thoroughbred history moment. A Florida bred. He is not just a racehorse. He is our heart. He is our toil and sweat. He soaks up the bright sunshine, becoming mighty and strong. He feasts on our abundant grass and drinks our mineral rich water. He is a way of life, our champion. His excellence brings us chills as he competes, inspiring us to greatness. He is our purpose, our soul. He is a Florida bred. Welcome back to Thoroughbred Week with a 1-2 finish by stable mates in the Grade 1 Hollywood Derby coming up in this segment. But first to Woodbine for the Grade 3 Valedictory Stakes at a mile and three quarters. Last year's winner, Melmick, the 2-5 favorite, Robert Geller picks up the call. Decision day in front and Gary Boulanger about length clear. Mel Mitch in second, one away at the Gulfans. Murasawi is edging up well. On the inside is Bangkok, and they are catching ground now, both from the bag English Illusion and Aldous Snow as they race inside the final four and a half. In the valedictory, it's Decision Day and Melmich the top two. Ethical Funds third. Murasawi extended the top two sprint. On the inside, Bangkok. Well behind still English Illusion and Aldo Snow. They caught some ground, but the leaders have sprinted on. Decision Day in front and is a solid one. A leader by a half holding Melmich at the moment. They're three to Ethical Funds. Murasawi's all out. Bangkok on the inside, then English Illusion. Aldo Snow is last. They turn in the valedictory and it's been Decision Day and Melmich. And and Melmich given full bores hit the front. Melmich, the defending champion, got away on the inside decision day. Bangkok trying to wriggle home and on the outside ethical funds. It's Melmich in front, chased home here by Bangkok. Ethical funds, English illusion from the clouds. The lead is tired, Melmich. Bangkok coming, Bangkok and on the inside, Melmich. Bangkok on the outside, got to the lead. Bangkok has won the valedictory. 17 to 1 Bangkok rallies to defeat odds on favorite Melmick by a half a length, giving jockey Emma Jane Wilson her fourth victory in the valedictory. Time of the race 259 and 4. Bangkok records his first victory since winning a $40,000 claimer in his seasonal debut in June. The five year old yelling by street hero was bred in Ontario by his owners Gail Wood and Dr. Ruth Barber. Bangkok has earned $288,000. Philip Gracie trains the winner. Access Thoroughbred Week replays every Saturday on Thoroughbred Daily News at thetdn.com. To Del Mar for three-year-olds in the Grade 1 Hollywood Derby, Chad Brown sent out three of the 12 starters, including 7-2 favorite Camelot Kitten. Trevor Denman with the call. And uh, away they go. All appear to come out smoothly. Frank Conversation is fast into stride, joined now by Black Jack Cat. Going up between those two now, we have Free Rose going up second, defiantly on the outside. Riding right behind the leaders, Beach Patrol come off the rail, alongside Path of David in the blue colours. Camelot Kitten races in mid-pack, five off the leaders, then Annals of Time. On the outside is revved up, down at the rail comes Isotherm. Hayabusa one has taken back second last, a good nine lengths off the leaders, and Diplodocus is last.
They head to the three-quarter pole now, and Blackjack Cat sets a sensible pace, not in a big hurry. Defiantly's on the far side. They've been followed by Free Rose down at the rail, and Beach Patrol in the perfect spot on the far side. In behind that, Frank Conversation. They are then being followed by Isotherm, who's five lengths off the leaders. Behind that comes Camelot Kitten, revved up as the red cap on the far side. They are followed by Annals of Time. Higher Busa One is still eight lengths off the leaders, been asked to pick it up now, and Diplodocus Trails. Into the turn they go, defiantly on the far side. Now comes to take on Blackjack Cat and Beach Patrol now looms the danger. Beach Patrol is coming to challenge on the grandstand side. Free Rose is down at the rail, needs room. Then comes Frank Conversation. In behind that is Camelot Kitten. They come to the top of the lane and Beach Patrol now strikes the front. Frank Conversation down the center. And here comes Camelot Kitten with a late run down at the rail. Blackjack Cat battles on as well. Annals of Time. Annals of Time out of nowhere. Annals of Time just blew past them. And Annals of Time a striking win. Annals of Time by Spendthrift Farms in Temple City rallies to defeat Beach Patrol by a length and a half as Chad Brown trainees run 1-2. Javier Castellano riding for the first time at Del Mar aboard the winner in 147 and 3. Only the fourth start for Annals of Time, who finished third behind his stablemates Camelot Kitten and Beach Patrol in the Grade 3 Hillprint Stakes. The colt was bred in Kentucky by Montecule and was an $80,000 yearling. Annals of Time has earned $289,000 for Clarevich Stables and William H. Lawrence. Javier Castellano with the Safe Ride of the Week, presented by Sally Horse Vans, the safest way to the winner's circle. Coming up, a photo finish in the matriarch. Mama Joyce to kick off the early pick four with an easy win. It's First Heritage in front. First Heritage begins to edge away. Stick Stately Dude gets there and pulls away in the end. But here's Floradora on the outside, and it's the New York invader, Floradora, to win it. Since Florida's first Kentucky Derby winner, Needles, in 1956, Florida has produced 50 national champions, the 11th Triple Crown winner, 13 classic winners, 155 millionaires, memorable performances, and 26 Breeders' Cup winners. Produce your next champion in Florida. Now a Florida thoroughbred history moment. Founded in 1956, Ocala Stud is the oldest active thoroughbred farm in Florida and a pioneer in the thoroughbred industry. The landmark Ocala Stud's message is simply put, if you want a runner, look to Ocala Stud. Ocala Stud revolutionized the worldwide industry, creating two-year-old in training sales. Now represented by the third generation of the O'Farrell family, the farm's reputation as a top producer of thoroughbreds makes them a symbol of excellence. This has been a Florida thoroughbred history moment. The Windstar Farm Star Breeders of the Month are John and Tanya Gunther. John and Tanya are the breeders of Tamar Coos. The son of Spitestown recently captured the Grade 1 Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile, defeating a field that now includes three other Grade 1 winners. Tamar Coos made an early move in the far turn and powered down the stretch to win going away. And Tamar Coos will win it going away! Thank you, John and Tanya. You make the dream possible. Success on the world's biggest stages begins at Keeneland. In 2016, one sales company had more graded stakes wins, more graded stakes winners, more grade one winners, more big time racing thrills than all other sales companies combined. It all adds up to another amazing year for those who carry the sign of success. The Keeneland Grads. Time now for the feature race of the week, presented by Keeneland, investing in racing's future since 1936. To Del Mar for turf fillies and mares in the grade one matriarch stakes, Miss Temple City, the eight to five favorite. Here's the call by Trevor Denman. And away they go to a good beginning. 
Along the inside stays in Vegas, bounced out the gate and goes straight to the leads. And Dyer's going up second. Here comes Miss Temple City on the outside gate to get up third. Mexican gold, pink cap right behind them. Time and motion in the white colours. Kit Kat is down at the rail. They followed by Roca Rojo, who's only four lengths off the leaders. Nancy from Nairobi's racing on the extreme outside. Then back to the grey, tis a kiss. A good nine lengths off the leaders. Prize exhibit second last. Sobradora Inc. is trailing. On to the back stretch they go and stays in Vegas. Ensured a good pace, but not flying. Goes on to lead by just over two. Zendai has taken a nice, comfortable hold in second. Riding behind that, Miss Temple City traveling very easily. And Miss Temple City now moving up on the far side. Mexican Gold is fourth. Then it's time and motion. Behind that comes Kit Kat, Nancy from Nairobi. Roca Rojo at the back of the group is seven off the leaders. Then tis a kiss prize exhibit. And Sobradora Inc. is last. Three-eighths of a mile to go and stays in Vegas, the leader. Taken on now by Zendaya. On the far side, Miss Temple Cities are coming after them. Mexican Gold goes well, needs somewhere to run down at the rail. Roca Rojo's riding behind that and then time in motion. Homeward bound and stays in Vegas, still the leader. Being tackled now by Zendaya. Down the center of the track, Miss Temple City. Roca Rojo on the outside. Miss Temple City flying. Miss Temple City on the outside. Roca Rojo, Miss Temple City. Oh, close, Miss Temple City. Roca Rojo's right there. Here's another look at that photo finish. It's race favorite Miss Temple City taking over the lead between horses under Edgar Prado. But 5-1, to one, Roca Rojo and Florent Giroux are closing rapidly on the outside. But Miss Temple City holds on to take the photo by a nose. A weekend grade one stakes double at Del Mar for Spendthrift Farm Stallion, Temple City. The Keeneland Sales graduate runs a mile in 135 flat. The third grade one victory of the season for Miss Temple City, who defeated males in both the Makers 46 mile and the Shadwell Turf mile at Keeneland. The Graham Motion trainee was coming off a fifth place finish in the Breeders' Cup mile. The four-year-old filly was bred in Kentucky by Bob Feld Bloodstock. Miss Temple City has earned $1,453,000 for the club racing, Needle in a Haystack LLC, and Sagamore Farm. The future turf star was consigned by Three Chimney Sales to the 2013 Keeneland January Sale, where she brought a final bid of $10,000. Fifty-four different Keeneland Sales graduates have won 69 Grade 1 or Group 1 stakes this year, more than all other sales companies combined. Miss Temple City, the Keeneland Sales Graduate of the Week. We'll have two-year-olds in the Grade 1 Los Al Cash Call Fraternity and the $300,000 Remington Springboard Mile. Two-year-old fillies in the Grade 1 Starlet Stakes, along with two-year-old stakes action from Gulfstream Park next week here on Thoroughbred Week. Thoroughbred Week is presented by the Florida Thoroughbred Breeders and Owners Association and the Florida Department of Agriculture. Also presented by Adina Springs South, Double Diamond Farm, Gulfstream Park, Jerry Parks Insurance Group, Ocala Breeders Sales Company, and Tampa Bay Downs. Online at tbreadweek.com.